Hey. Hey, what's up? Hey, man. Sorry I was late. Uh, no excuses. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no problem. I figured you were, like, sleeping or something, so I was like, I was going to message you, but I'm glad. Uh... No, I was uh, eating with the family, and we totally just lost track of time. Not a problem at all. Let me readjust this, because whenever you go live, yeah. it, like, shifts everything. Or <laughs> dual okay. live. This is fun. But, uh, yeah, how, how's it going? How are you hanging in there? It's going with, good. Uh... It's, get, it's getting a little colder in Nashville, which feels... Feels good. Feels inspiring. Ready for is it, the? Is it normally like pretty hot there? Like there, I've been there once, as you know. I was there like a month ago. But is yeah. it like in the summer is it like a hundred degrees? It doesn't get to a hundred. I mean May, but um, no, it's it's normally just humid when it's hot. So that's what that's what makes it feel like it's you know hot and sweaty in the summer. Right. But um, and that's actually why um, my family and I years ago we um, moved to L.A. Cause we were tired of the, we lived in Nashville for a long time, you know, and then we're like, let's get out of here. We're tired of the tornadoes, the brown yeah. little recluse spiders, and uh, the humidity. Cause I, I would walk, I'm, I sweat heavily. So I would walk outside normally if I'm not careful, I'd be drenched in sweat, you know, it just ruins my whole day or, you know, whatever I'm doing that day, a session or whatever. Right. Um, but but I, I'm jokingly saying that, but um, now that we've been back, actually, this, the summers have been been fine. A lot of it is probably because we've I've just been inside, you know. But uh, but yeah, this is the best time to be in Nashville right now. Yeah. The fall, it feels like great. Things look great, look pretty and beautiful. Look yeah. Nice temperature. Yeah. 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 Same here. So, well, uh, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for agreeing to do this. Yeah. Um, definitely you. cool for you to do this on this page. I know everybody else is like freaking out right now they think Aww. this is awesome equally think this is thanks. awesome so thanks for joining everyone it makes yeah, it so it's... great and zach man you've been doing such a great job with the page it's super inspiring and um the stuff you find i'm like what the heck how do you find that it's so cool i'm i feel like i'm a fan well i <laughs> <laughs> well I, yeah i appreciate that but uh i definitely can't take the credit for that there's so many of these people in this chat are the ones sending me the stuff i'm just uh have the I've tried to create the platform to get it out there on a large uh, scale, but like, yeah, a lot of these people are sending me stuff. So a lot of the stuff I have, like, I have found or like I have, I've had it for years, but like a lot of people have sent me stuff. So I'm definitely appreciative of that. But so yeah, thank you guys in the chat here. Um, but yeah, let's get started uh, for Instagram cuts us off because like I didn't realize that with Nate after he hit 60 minutes, it just like cuts you off, yeah. um, which is no warning or anything. But uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to do things a little differently this time. I'm just going to, like, cut out the icebreakers. Like, I, I was yeah. a learning, uh, you know, learning experience it. last time. So um, I'm just going to jump right into the topics if that's cool. So Yeah, for sure. Um, so I know you off. said – yeah, 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 I'll go for it. I don't, I don't know the questions. Let's go for it. Did you, did you look at them? I sent you. I did. I skimmed over a few of them. but I, I, and, um, So I'm familiar a little bit. But, yeah, I, at the same time, I was like, I don't know if I want to know what he's going to ask me. So okay. that's kind of, I'm made a hundred percent did. So, um, so I listened to the podcast you did in 2018, um, on everyone's dumb. It's the, the podcast was titled everyone's dumb. Um, so I'm familiar with some of the origins of plus one through that, but if you could sum up your personal beginnings of the band, like, so how you heard of the plus one opportunity, what you were doing, um, before that opportunity, and your initial reluctance of wanting to even be in the band at all. A lot, a lot of people don't know you actually turn down the opportunity to be in plus one and you know now you're you you were in it so can you uh kind of elaborate on those things? yeah i will um so yeah so i i grew up in florida lakeland florida which is between is between tampa and orlando and um living down there um a lot of big christian artists would would come through i i um at this church that i grew up in is a big ten thousand seat of tourists. 10,000 seat auditorium. Wow. And uh, it was a church. And um, so, you know, Michael W. Smith, Stephen Richard Chapman, DC Tower, everybody, Amy Grant, all, all the big ones that come through. And that's that's what got me going, oh, I want to do this, you know? Yeah. I, wanna, I gotta move to Nashville. Yeah, that's what I thought. And so I would, I would, um, you know, I'd take lots of trips up and I finally decided to go, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna move up there. So I moved up to Nashville when I was, I think I was 19, freshly 19. And, um, wow, it's a long time ago. Let me think. I think it was 19. And, uh, yeah, I, I just was up there, and I was just trying to, to meet people, trying to figure out, am I going to be a songwriter? Am I going to be an artist? You know? And um, 
basically, I, I found, I learned early on the power of networking and um, just being a nice person. I mean, that's how I am now. <laughs> get along with people and I'm honest, I have nothing to hide. I just right. I think that kind of persona kind of helped open doors for me. And and then the eagerness to kind of learn and be aware and, and not feel like, you know, I've arrived in any situation. I'm always trying to learn from somebody or like, you know, surround myself with people that are, yeah, in all different walks of life. So, um, so in Nashville to answer your question, what I was doing was just trying to connect with people, you know? I was literally working, I got a job, I was working at a shoe store um and that's how i was making money and then um what happened basically i got a phone call from oh oh okay there's more to this story i'll take it <laughs> so basically i had this opportunity to go out on the road on the weekends to play piano for this southern gospel artist named janet pascal and i was like okay i'll try that it didn't work out too well because i was still learning how to play piano by ear you know and, and plus that Southern gospel style that I wasn't too great at it, that I ended up, um, I ended up um, just selling merch for her on the weekends. Somewhere in there, I meet this guy, Brian Hudson, who knows Mitchell Solaric, who's the manager who put Plus One together. You know? Right. So Mitchell calls me out of the blue and says, hey, I heard you might want to audition for this group. Uh, short story, just give you a backstory. I, I actually told this guy, Brian Hudson, who told Mitchell, I told him, look, don't tell Mitchell about me. I don't want to do a boy thing. I'm a real musician. You know, I, I want to, I'm, you know, I'm playing the piano and singing, you know. And um, I said, please don't tell him. You know, I, I don't want to have to say no. And I'm non-confrontational at the time. And you know, he still tells him. He still tells him, you know, this guy Nathan might want to do the group. Uh, so, anyway, Mitchell calls me. And um, I ended up uh, kind of being open. And I was like, so what are the details? And he's like, yeah, you know, you've been flying to California, San Francisco, auditioning for the group. And we've narrowed it down to 10 guys trying to figure out who's there. And I said, no, I said, um, at first I said, hey, I'm thinking about it. Let me call you back. I called him back and said, you know what? I would, I would be wait. Hey, Dwayne, I just saw you join. Um, Dwayne Laring, um, uh, guitar player, Sonic Flood. We started that group and uh, many other bands. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so basically I, I, I said, no, I said, I don't want to waste your, your ticket. I'm going to pay for my flight to San Francisco to audition with the group. And um, I said, no. Um, because I didn't want to wait for the guy's money, you know? And he's like, yeah. well, well, we'll keep in touch. So that's that story. Long story short, I ended up getting a call back. Will you please audition? And I said, okay, this must be a sign. You know, so I was praying about it. And um, I ended up auditioning and, yeah, got in the group. I, I can elaborate more, but I want to hold back and let you answer your questions but or ask your questions. But, um, yeah, that's that's. I said no originally. Yeah, I think the cool part was in the podcast, you – you and you just basically said it the same way, only just in a summarized form. But you're saying like you said no, and then you kind of you you know some people in your life are like, why did you do that? You never turned out. You're never supposed to turn down an opportunity. And you said, yeah. right, if, if you know if God wants me to do this, and then it's a sign that I'm gonna do it. And then you got to call back. Like, so I yeah, thought, that was pretty cool when you said that. But uh, no, that's true, and I don't want to skip over that. I really felt that. Like I said no, and then people said, what are you doing? You know. Um, you should never say no. And so I prayed. I was like, God, did I just blow this? Did you, pre you know, present this opportunity? And I said, if, if this is the case, have him call me back, you know? Yeah. Mitchell didn't know my number. We didn't have cell phone numbers in. He literally called me a week later. And so I took wow. it as a sign. Like, it's a door to go through. So that's important. Yeah, that's super awesome. Uh, also in that podcast, you talk about how you attended college for a little over a year, um, then decided to pursue music instead. Um, and that you felt like being in the band was your, your school. Um, with that being said, how much of the music production skills that you possess today would you credit from being in the studio with David Foster and everybody else you were in the studio with um, 20 years ago? That's hard to say. I definitely, you're right. It was, you know, being in the band was kind of like continuing, you know, music school for me. You know, you're working with, like you just said, David Foster and a bunch of, at the time, a lot of different uh, producers who were doing amazing things then. And and are still doing stuff. So. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a, a learning for me on di different levels. Production wise, I, I think it, it pushed me to get to think at a certain level and, and definitely with David, I, you know, he's, he, um, you know, even little things like I'm stacking your vocals, you know, yeah. like I remember getting there stacking, he was like, he'd be like, hey, listen to yourself. 
you know, like, you know, like it's like stop just singing, but listen to your stuff that you're stacking to. Like, what what are you doing? And just little things like that. I was like, oh yeah, I guess I should listen to what the the thing I'm stacking to. And um, people don't don't know what that is. A lot of times you'll stack your vocals many times over the track and then sing to it again and again and get these bigger sounding vocals. Um, but I think just he, even he, riding with him and other riders, it, it was it, education for me because I came from a small town in Lakeland, Florida. And, you know, big dreams, want to be a songwriter. And I was able to write with different songwriters and producers who the bar was set really high. And it made me go, okay, I, I can't compromise. There's, there's, you can't come up with a song and have excuses for it. You know, you got to be like, this is the best it can be. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and we can always do better. But um, I, I, before I moved to Nashville, before I moved to Nashville, I'm in L.A. working with, with uh, these different, I would say, caliber of producers and, and songwriters i my bar was set a little lower i, I found myself um yeah i just know how to push myself to the next level and i feel like being around these people really kind of put the bar higher but you know what now today with the internet man it's like there's so many great songwriters you're feeding off each other it's like you know that's that's a thing of the past to, to be stuck in a small home yeah. you know hometown it's like you got so many different communities and things that can help each other become better at your craft, you know? I can't imagine how much it's changed over the last 20 years. Um, yeah. You know, just everything, networking with the, you know, being a producer. Like, I'm curious, I would love to, you know, have, making music myself, I would love to have just had a glimpse of what it looked like even 20 years ago. Like, I, especially working off of the big, like, you know, tube screen computers, like, you know, it seemed, did programs like, Pro Tools and all like, do those exist then? Like, I don't even yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they existed, but you know, I mean, as far as my personal story, like the, the, before I even moved to LA, there, there was something called Session 8. And it was like a computer, PC-based, you could only have eight tracks, you know? <laughs> and and I, I worked at a radio station for a bit before I moved to Nashville. And um, I would just, I would actually put together their, um, their liners, like before, uh, you know, their, WTWB, you know, all these kind of things, yeah, you know, and I, and I put that together, and, um, and I didn't have effects like reverb and stuff like that, so I would learn to do things that would just kind of entertain the ear, like I, you know, I wouldn't stack my vocal, but I'd do like little adjustments to the tracks to make them have a weird effect, you know, and double yeah. and things like that. And so, you know, that was, yeah, that was computer based. But when we, that being said, when we started working with David Foster on the first plus one record, that wasn't on, on a computer. I mean, I guess ultimately it went to the computer, but it, mm -hmm. he recorded on a 48 track, you know, like this two inch, two inches tape. And, um, and that was old school. Like now you wow. comp your vocals. For those of you, if you don't know about music production, it's like, we'll sing, we'll sing a bunch of tracks on the, and you'll see them on a computer and then you right. go back and find the best of the best and make this perfect vocal, you know? Well, back then for the first Plus One record, um, we would sing like probably like five different takes. And then you had this little module that David used that would that would monitor all five takes, but would only play one, one at a time. And in real time, he would comp that vocal together. Like he'd play it back and, you wow. know, you know? And that and, and hit the comp would have to be in real time. If you messed up, like yeah, rewind it, just try to get. So even comping a vocal was was a talent, you know. Um, and then I I think somewhere in, in, at the end of that record, somewhere in that process, I remember David saying, um, "Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit producing. You got all these producers who are doing Pro Tools and they're like killing it. You know, just doing you know crazy stuff like." Yeah, he didn't want to adapt or something like that. <laughs> well, I think he just knew his strengths and weaknesses and and all that but uh, he kept kept producing yeah, yeah. 16 grammys later here, there he is so. yeah so but, yeah, uh, your question computers are there but um we're uh, we're on the front end of that you know yeah yeah um so some of the other questions i have are not maybe as in depth they're just just general out of curiosity kind of questions um when is the last time you listened to a plus one song excluding the christmas album because i know it's christmas season yeah. for a lot of folks uh from start to finish just for the sake of enjoyment Oh, on a song? You've been in oh, the shower yeah. you had or something like that. You have it on shuffle. You're like, you know, I'm going to listen to Soul Tattoo and you just sing the whole song. Anything like that. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I probably haven't done it by myself. It was kind of, it was kind of the prime, the pump was, or, yeah. I, I, basically, my kids 
we're asking about plus one. Something came up, and I was talking about it, and I was playing them some things. Somewhere in there, I probably was like, hey, let me play a song. And it was Soul Tattoo. I love Soul Tattoo. I feel like that's such a great, yeah, I just love that song. And um, So I think that was probably the song, yeah. I probably did, like, once they were gone, my, I, my Spotify was still playing. I was like, yeah, let me listen to this. <laughs> Busted out some choreograph or, you know, choreography <laughs> from. Oh, I haven't done that forever. I don't know. <laughs> Um, what was your favorite memory of being a plus one? I'm talking one that's so memorable, so meaningful that you wish you had a time machine just to just go back and visit it one more time. Oh, um, any, whether it's on stage singing, whether it's, you know, something off, off stage, anything. Um, I mean, when people, I've had that question asked, a version of that question asked. I think uh, the first thing that pops in my mind, I'll just share that. I don't know if it's the most memorable, but the fact that it popped in my mind must it must be, um, is just the, uh, the this Christmas party that, that was so iconic. It literally felt like a movie. It's like um, we were singing at this Christmas party in Beverly Hills area, and um, and there was you know Jack Jack Nicholson, wow. uh, Kevin Costner, <laughs> Goldie Hawn, Kurt Russell. Um, uh, uh, what's his face? Chess. No, it's resting. I don't know. Uh, Johnny Mathis. Uh, I think even um, Natalie Cole was there. Oh wow! Nat King Cole's out, and a um, ton of you know artists, like, people, and artists and actors like that were all just cozied up in this family room. It was a big Hollywood family room, yeah. You know? <laughs> but it was too big. It just felt like you were hanging out, and there's Christmas decorations, and it felt so like a movie. We're like, what? And we just, yeah. Um, and we didn't have iPhones or cell phones back then. You know, so we couldn't really take pictures back then. I would have totally been like selfied it up, and right. you know, you know and, and it's weird. Like being in situations that we were in plus one, it, um, if we had the way social media works now, I think there would have been even more like networking and opportunities created because now it's normal. You meet someone, you're like, hey, you want a quick selfie? Yeah, of course. Right. What's your Instagram? This, and you're tagging each other, yeah. and, and it feeds this thing. Back then, it was weird. We had like disposable cameras, but I felt like a weirdo. Here we go, take a, take a, like, let me just wind up real quick. Camera <laughs> and wind it up. Yeah. <laughs> but that's awesome. Yeah, I, I would imagine, especially with Jack Nicholson. I mean, I, all the names that you mentioned are just obviously huge, like A list oh, names. But let me say this because this is a, just a t little thing uh, as a detail. Um, I remember we're, we're singing like Silent Night. And, um, you know, on the front row, if you want to call them rows, in the front of the section, Jack Nicholson, and he's got his, you know, his ass big voice. And yeah. his, we're hearing him sing, silent. <laughs> it's so, so cool, to, like, hearing these, these, these textures of these voices that we've seen talk in movies. It was unbelievable. Anyway, on that note, I wish so bad that there was an existing, and if somebody has it for any whatever reason, an existing video of Plus One singing Silent Night. Nate was right when we were talking about that last live a chat was like that song like that composition of all like all your guys' vocals oh. is incredible like yeah that's cool well that's that's a lot to do with tim um i'm going blank on his last name it's horrible tim can't think of his last name right now uh but he yeah. he went on to um he did a lot of uh vocal arrangements for <laughs> me you know adam Anders is, is a guy uh produced a lot of that and and, and tim I'm going blank. Sorry, dude, for watching this. Um, but he, amazing vocal, just singer in general, but just would hear these amazing harmonies. And that was his arrangement. But he felt, hey, do this and that. And I, that, that was a fun experience. Yeah, it was cool to hear our, hear our voices all come together and do that. You know? Yeah, that, that was that's my favorite track on that album. Oh, cool. Um, which song from any album, Christmas included, would or means the most to you? Uh, maybe it's because you co-produced it, you co-wrote it, or just reminds you of some good times. Oh, yeah. What the, the means the most? Oh, man, I got to look through. Uh, I like Soul Tattoo. It's one of my favorites. I, You're like the lead in that, too. So. I, and maybe that's why. And it sounds so <laughs> selfish for you to say that. But I don't no, think... No, it's all right. When I first heard that song, I really thought that was a cool melody. And I, and I, and I have good memories associated with recording that song um just because we did it you know with ronnie jerkins production team ronnie was there a little bit but really it was his, his production people LaShawn daniels who actually um died recently in a, in a car accident and that was i can't believe that but um you know LaShawn daniels was like you know amazing producer 
vocal i you know just in, again inspiring me I, there's things i know i took away from that session that i probably do consciously or subconsciously now in my sessions and um they're just great vocal guys and i remember michael jacks i think nate said this but i'll say it again my, you know there's these sunglasses on, on the on the console and i remember going you know i'm a big michael jackson fan yeah like, whose who's sunglasses are these and he's like oh michael jackson was here yesterday he left those i was like what speaking of i have i have a side story really quick yeah this is bad to do, but I did it. Um, <laughs> David Foster's house, you know, often, and we were there. And this is no iPhones, guys. This is back in the day when you when you had a Rolodex and you you had someone's number you write down in a an address book, you know. And I, and I was at uh, David's uh, desk computer because he was I was doing something on the computer and and um and right there was the the contacts list just open, you know. I was oh like, wow. Oh. And so we're all looking around. I was like, oh, my gosh, I have, we have to see who's in here, right? Yeah. And, and we look, and we see some famous names in there, of course. And, and I look, I was like, we got to look for Michael Jackson. I look, Michael Jackson, uh, at least his name is in there, Michael Jackson. I get, I get the, the courage to call the number. And everyone's oh, like, wow. you're kidding me? I call from David's la landline, which is like, what am I doing? And, um, and I, I, <laughs> so I call this number, and this guy answered. And it was a lower voice, like, hello. And I said, yeah, is Michael there? And immediately he goes, click, and hangs up. You know? Oh, wow. That's it. I don't know if it was him or not, or his bodyguard or whatever, but that's my story. You would that think is super awesome. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think you would have known it was Mike. It probably was his bodyguard or something. Maybe it was yeah. Michael in disguise. I don't know. He's, yeah. Anyway. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> um, so most albums have songs pitched. Like, I don't know if people know this, so, like, a lot of people who don't make music know this, but you know, you have an album with 10 to 12 songs on it. It's not like you just record those songs and go, there's 10 to 12 songs. Sometimes you record 40 songs or whatnot, and then you get, like the management, the band, whoever is like, all right, let's pick these 10 to 12 and these make the album. Throw these ones aside or they make another album. Um, <laughs> do you remember any of the names of the songs that were tossed out? Maybe even specifically on like The Promise um, that were songs that you wish had made the album or did make another album yeah uh the, it's funny the only ones that come to mind are the ones that i pitched and didn't make it so of course i remember them and of course i'm like i wish they would have so i can list those but there, there was one that uh that i don't i wasn't the biggest fan of it but we had some good memories with it it was called beyond the clouds it was probably one of the first songs we sang as a group before we named ourselves plus one this is even before like you know jason is Jason Perry came later. We, there was another guy named Grady Long who was right, really and he left, and then, and then Jason came. So there's a demo, and I have it actually. Maybe I'll talk to you about. You see what you showcase it. But yes, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy leaked one. It's your turn to leak another. He did. One. Okay, maybe I'll leak one. This one's called Beyond the Clouds. It's so old school. Actually, Beyond the Clouds. Did Avalon end up cutting it? Avalon. Somebody can verify that. I think sure. Avalon went on to cut it. I think. I'm not sure, but. Regardless, you know, we'll see. Maybe I'll get permission to do that. But yeah. Um, yeah, there's a demo of us singing this song, Beyond the Clouds. So that's one. Uh, there's another song I wrote called What Am I Supposed to Do that the guys I was so into. And I even rewrote the lyrics for Plus One. And everyone was like, yeah, it's okay. And I was like, what are you talking about? It's the best song ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that was a, that was a, I thought a cool one. There was another one called Chaos. Actually. Yes, yes. Yeah, I actually pitched Chaos to Plus One, and they weren't, they were, you know, they were up to it, just they weren't feeling it as a whole. And I was like, that's fine. And I ended up putting on my own solo record. So there's yes. a song on Spotify. Go look it up. It's called Chaos. That was meant for Plus One. And, um, and yeah, I ended up just doing it, which I'm glad I got to do it. I, I, I like that song, actually. Yeah, I w yeah, and I posted about that probably back in May, but, like, oh, okay. it threw me. I was trying to get footage to put on the page, and then I remember I got to the part in make of, making of the album DVD, and it was like you were sitting there in, like, a little stool, and you're like, <laughs> I'm writing this song, and this is called Chaos. I'm like, w there's a song on Nathan's album called Chaos. Yeah. There's no way that this isn't that That's song. That's right. You did do that. Yeah, that was it. I was writing for them, and then they weren't feeling it. I was like, "That's fine. I'll do it." Whenever, how many years later, I did it. Um, yeah, that's right. So, that's cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, a... Next one. I actually had this question for Nate, and before we went into our live, we so, talked. Someone, like... Sorry, someone just says Avalon does have a song called "Beyond the Clouds." So that's what I thought. So Avalon cut that song called "Beyond the Clouds." 
But um, I want to see if we can get our plus one version. I'll see if we can. I can link. Uh, I yeah, can... I definitely. I would definitely need to hear that, especially now that we know it exists. <laughs> um, this next question I actually had talked to Nate about, and he, you know, messaged me maybe an hour before we went live, and he's like, "I don't want to talk about this either for whatever reason or because I just don't know what how to respond to it." Um, yeah. But I put it on this one because I'm just genuinely curious. Uh, there might not even be like a significant response to it. Um, yeah. But, but September 11th terrorist attacks happened at one of the high points of plus one's career how did that affect the band if at all like was there any like security measures or part of the tour canceled like i, I know like it could be a quick answer but i'm just curious did that yeah. affect plus no one not, not that i remember there was no major like oh my gosh we canceled tours no it just maybe affected how we flew like the rest of the world but i remember uh, we were living in nashville technically yeah and uh we lived in Nashville, but we were on the road a lot. So even though we lived in Nashville, we were hardly there. And I remember specifically being um, in the Georgian Hotel, which we stayed off in, which is in Santa Monica. Um, and yeah, woke up one morning and, and uh, yeah, saw the, the, the news about 9-11. Right. Um, yeah, I don't remember after that. I think we were still kind of touring. I don't remember. I don't remember th Nothing changed. Like big deal, yeah. Yeah, I'm just always curious because, like I said, you guys, I was – Plus one was like thriving mm -hmm. at that point. I'm like, I didn't know if that, you know, made you pump the brakes on anything. So, yeah. Um, I can only imagine how high the moral expectations are being in a Christian band. Like, you probably can't even say like fart without somebody being like, ooh, like it's too, it's like, or, you know, so, yeah. you know, you have the people that just are trying to watch every move and correct you on everything you're doing. I'm obviously exaggerating in my example there. Yeah. What are some things, though, that you're comfortable with sharing that you guys might have done behind the scenes? Uh, maybe on the tour bus or something <laughs> that you're comfortable sharing that plus yeah. one that would put plus one fans in like a state of shock 20 years ago. <laughs> Honestly, we're, I mean, man, for the most part, we were really good guys. It's like, I think maybe we, you know, pull some bottle of wine or something. You know, I think I, I, I like to drink wine. I think I, yeah, I think maybe that would be the, sh the shock. But man, we were not the kind of band that was like, drinking it up and getting drunk and I mean, <laughs> what you saw is what we were you know we were, we were legitly how we felt and, and thought um let me think i know Nate, Nate opened up about some stuff on his 21st birthday um, he yeah. didn't want to speak for any of the other guys but he he somebody asked him that question i think on uh on the tw on the 20th anniversary somebody asked him that in his instagram questions and he answered that like through text Okay. But, uh, that's all he really said about that. Yeah, I mean, what did he say? I don't remember. He, he just said, like, he went out and, like, he said, I think he said he got drunk on his 21st uh, birthday or something okay. like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, so, yeah, there's that, I man, it's such a blur that, yeah. I feel like, too, it's like, back then, you know, we were still young, just trying to figure out what we thought about life. And now, now that's where right. I'm looking to the lens. I'm 40. I'll be 43 in March. Um, I'm looking at that that lens where I'm like things that I I don't know I'm trying to figure out what was a big deal then that I that I feel like it could be shocking now I think there's so many people just be more honest now with the internet and their thoughts that it, right. things that I thought were shocking yeah for me I probably just drink anything really yeah M maybe maybe you know guys get guys this is a common thing guys would be like you know joking around and, and trying to be, I don't know, just say stupid stuff. I don't know, just guys talking. Nothing yeah. crazy. <laughs> I, I can relay. I can, I can. <laughs> uh, so I noticed that Plus One has a massive, had and has, currently has still, like when you type in any cover on YouTube or anything, a massive following in Asia. Oh, yeah. Why is that? Did the label specifically market you guys over there for any specific reason? Like the same, I don't know, if a lot of people know that NSYNC was heavily marketed in Europe and blew up in Europe well before they blew up in the United States. And they kind of took that, all right, let's translate this fame over to the United States. Did the label try to do that with viewers? Why was that the case you're so big in Asia? Yeah, you know, my, I don't, I can't speak exactly for the label, but what I remember seeing is they 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 wanted us to go. We did a Southeast Asia tour. You know, we went to Malaysia and Indonesia and different areas, Philippines, and um, that was on purpose because they said in general um, th that area of the country at the time really loved um, pop music and, and bands like what we're doing. So they wanted to take advantage of that. So I don't think. Well, there were plus one fans. I, I started to say, I don't think they even knew who we were, but that's not true. Because I remember going to Thailand off the airport 
and like big two jumbotron screens said welcome club one you know at, at oh, the wow. thailand airport you know and it was just like a sea of people like you know welcome and so that being said yeah i don't know i guess i guess the label obviously did mark this is before um the internet the way it is it's like they were marketing probably through radio or some means of just maybe just advertisement so yeah. they knew about us and um but i think us touring there probably you know really made some some long-lasting connections with a lot of fans that that i know today will, will you know reach out to me and say things and i can kind of kind of tell there's some some um lifelong fans i think who have been super cool and nice to follow our journey and i recognize their names and screen names like oh yeah okay yeah. Uh, so but i but yeah when i look at it so i you know under spotify i, I can go in there and see under our, our profile page of where all of our streams are happening. And the majority of it is is in, in, in Asia, Southeast Asia. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Like like I said, all the covers, if you type in like any cover on YouTube or anything like that, there's so many um, videos that derive from Asia. It's just like, I, I had to have assumed that something, you know, there was some sort of huge marketing push or something. I mean, the, the following there, you would think that you guys are still 20 years old touring in Asia right now. like. Hey, I brought it up. I, I I told the guys. I, I got the contacts. I got a guy who who will set up some shows out there. He's a promoter. You know, it's just the I don't know. The guys don't want to do it yet. We'll yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you know, and speaking of you talk about memories, it's like now that you're saying that there were some really fun memories touring there. You know, it just was the first time being away overseas. You know, in Asia, the, the Kuala Lumpur. Um, the towers there, you know, and it's just like, that was really cool. Amazing. Where you filmed uh, Here in My Heart was like the most beautiful yeah. looking place ever. I wish I could go there just like vacation. Uh, well, it's a fake set, you know. Was it really? Was yeah, that not it, in Asia? Well, no, no, it is in Asia. But it's, oh, okay. it, was, it was a movie set that they filmed like, like kung fu movies and things on. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what they said. And it was true. Like so, a lot of those, like in in here in my heart, um, a lot of those buildings are fake buildings. Like they're, they're real buildings, but the back half of them didn't exist. Didn't exist, or were kind of like inside. There would be a lot of props and things like that. Yeah. So it was like kind of a, yeah, it was a fake. It was a fake world. <laughs> I would have never known that. Now, like, I guess I gotta go vacation. Sorry to bust, bust your excitement. But yeah. yeah, I feel kind of kind of heartbroken there. <laughs> well, you know what's funny about that? I was like, so you know, being the band. As a whole, I would say we weren't super gung ho about here in my heart. That was not our favorite song. We weren't like we hate it. But we're like, eh, we got other songs we want to do. But the labels like, trust us, we need this song. We're like, okay, we'll do. We kind of did it for the label, you know. Yeah. And and so we weren't super like excited about it. And then they're like, we want to do a music video. We're like, ah, oh, video. So we do this music video, and our manager at the time was like, look, it's just gonna be in Asia. No one's gonna see it. You know, this is before the internet, before YouTube. Yeah. Psych, yeah. <laughs> but turns out, anyone can see it. <laughs> it's kind of fun. But and I'm that's not, like, I feel like great. that is the biggest song. Oh, yeah. And maybe because they can identify with it, but like, that is the biggest song that's covered if you look on YouTube by like people of Asian descent, you know. Well, so, I don't know. it turns out major when you're an artist in a band, you think you know what you want, you know, because you're new and, and, and you have things. But it, I've learned there's a valuable lesson in listening to other people, listening to other people who are in the industry and you have a team of people and they look at it from outside of your perspective so like we were wrong about the christmas album we don't want to do the christmas album but it's right. one of the best ones we ever did i'm super proud of that record you know we didn't want to do here in my heart but it's a great it's a great song it's catchy like you said people are covering it you know um there's a few other songs we we were like oh, i don't know if we want to do that so it turns out we didn't know what we wanted so good thing we had a manager good thing we had a label <laughs> you know even even you joining the band, you didn't want to do that. Good thing you had people pushing you to do that. No, that's, that's, a, good for point. that's a good point. So I think the, the moral of this whole interview is <laughs> listen to people around you, you know, yes. give feedback. Don't make decisions purely on your own. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, in early 2000, you guys' career freshly launched, and I'm sure things were like, at a, you guys felt like you were on a, at a, like you had her on a high. You were just at the top of the world. Um, at what point did you guys notice that the overall satisfaction of the band started to decline? In other words, that high started to go away. Like, um, obviously that had to have happened because the band, bands would not break up if that didn't happen. Um, but at what point did 
you know, I'll even yeah. use like a metaphoric example. At the end of the, um, written on my heart when you guys are on the balcony, you're all like high five. Yeah. Each other. Like I, I, I imagine and like hugging it out, bro hugging. I imagine that that's what it felt like for like a first year. But when did that end? Uh, like I think a time frame. I, I feel like, you know, even when we did the band, there was an element of us. I, I would think I would I think I can say this for everybody. We like doing the band, but there's still an element of us feeling like, uh, we're in a boy band and and, and there's a lot of great things about that. But there was a, a still a group of people, musicians, other outsiders who who would look down at a boy band as this isn't a legit band. You know what I mean? So we yeah. always kind of fought that in our head, like trying to prove, no, 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 we're a real band. We're real singers. We we sing our real songs. You know, we don't do auto tune, although we did a little bit. But for most part, we really didn't. You know, right. um, and and we, we sing live and all that stuff. You know, we try to do all these like we're trying to prove ourselves. So it was a constant state of trying to prove ourselves. Looking back, that's what I see. And mm -hmm. um, so that being said, um, when did the 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 fire start to stop or whatever. Right. I mean, I think we were so busy that it wasn't like it just stopped. It was, we were so busy. It was exciting that um, we just started feeling the pulse of the industry and in, industry change. Anyway, we were kind of on the back end of the boy band thing. NSYNC, Backstreet Boys had had their success. We came in, but we were still kind of feeding off of the, the boy band thing was happening. And right. um, so we, we were music lovers. We listened to all kinds of bands, you know? So we, we knew what the world thought of and how TRL and those kinds of shows started like playing other songs that weren't like this pop thing. You know, you had some of the, the uh, what kind of bands you want to talk about? Like just the punk rock bands, you know, that, that kind yeah. of stuff, punk rock pop, you know? And we, we saw that happening. We're like, okay. And so part of this, I think we started thinking, well, how long is this going to last? When does that end? Are we even proud to do this kind of music? And I think you saw that changing on, on the obvious record. We're like, we have more guitars, you know? Um, I remember a story, I won't tell you who this is with, but there's some big producers that we, we met up with at Lane. So these big R&B hip hop producers who, who were doing pop producers who were, who were working on our record. And we show up at their house and, and um, they had Lamborghinis and Ferraris in their, in, their, in their thing, the whole thing. We walk up, we're showing these songs, excited, everything, like, cool. And then I, I remember going, hey, so what we're thinking is we want to do like pop music, but mixed with like guitars, you know? And they were like, oh. Oh no, we don't. Do that confidently, they were like, "No, no, we don't do guitars." I'm like, uh, -uh. and we're like, "Oh, okay," and um, and but that was our thing. Like, we were like, "No, we want to do some guitars." We want, and so that's kind of happened on obvious. We we try to mix this this thing of you know electric guitars and and pop stuff at the time. Not on every record, but if you look back at the record, you, you can see that. But um, yeah, yeah, it just kind of started to die down. I think I think our excitement started to die down as the band was like, I think music's getting outdated. What are we going to do next? But I think, you know, Jason, Jason decided to leave the group. He felt like he wanted to do, you know, something else ministry wise and different things. And he wanted to do the band and we're like, okay. But I think that honestly did escalate that quickly. If he stayed in the band, we probably would have fought it out and lived off of some momentum. But with him leaving, it was the beginning of a domino effect of, Okay, the band is only four people. Okay, now what's what's happening next? And then with Jeremy leaving, it's like okay, and then the three of us. And um, I know Nate had talked about this in the in the uh, interview before, but um, even then we we were like with with Nate, Gabe, and myself, we were like, let's just do another band. And then Atlantic Records talked us into doing a Christmas record, which we did. And we thought, okay, maybe we'll just, you know, actually some other managers talked us in, you should keep the plus one name and, and release it. You know, there's value there. Yeah. And, you know, maybe so, but um, so that's why we did the Exodus record as, as plus one. And um, I think that's debatable with whether we should have done a new band, but I don't know. No regrets. You do what you're doing and yeah, make it happen. So, but I'm proud but, of that record too, Exodus, you know, it's just a different record. So you, you mentioned, yeah, like around that 2002 area, era when Jason left. If I'm being completely honest here, um, yeah. so there's somebody who's actually in the chat right now, uh, Brooke. She's awesome. She sent me. She we live in the same. There's we live in the same city, um, okay. the Virginia Beach area, um, and we got footage from the 700 Club, uh, CBN. Oh yeah. And you were singing a couple songs. I have those. I'm about to post them in a few. Nice. Did you guys do like an interview after the fact? And it seems like you guys are really checked out. Like you guys are just so tired. I, 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 I kind of felt like bad watching you, but like if, if I you watch it, that. it's just like uh, you guys just seem like really 
I guess you're over it almost. So you know I don't I, know. I, I can see that interview, but I remember feeling like something happened that day or something. Was it what was that the 700 Club you said? Yeah, the 700 Club. You guys were sitting on stools in like a bowling pin formation. You were playing guitar and uh, there was like a woman host. I could send you the video. No, no, I, I totally remember that now. I, now I'm getting mixed up with another um, show that was kind of like 700 Club, but it's not something else. Okay, yeah, I actually I remember having good feelings that because I thought it was 700 Club, pretty big, but maybe we were just super tired. I want to see that video to see yeah. if I can have some more insight. I have I have all the videos I'm gonna post and that I have in my possession already on YouTube, just under um, the unlisted, so you can still somebody send somebody the link, but they're not showing on. So I'll send you the link after this. Okay, cool. Um, but I'll jump into more questions. So real quick, I just want to say that we started this at ten ten, um, so that means in twenty minutes is automatically gonna shut off. Would you be okay if we restarted that just to finish? I don't have that many more questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, that way you don't rush off. Yeah, we'll, we'll start and come back. Is everybody cool with that? Yeah, and that, that way, like, if it cuts out, we'll, like, kn we know when it's going to stop. We'll come back and we'll do some, like, the fan questions. We'll end it with that. But All right. Uh, I'm going to finish some of these questions here. Where am I at here? Um, oh, you oh, yeah, most of you guys follow and interact with each other here on Instagram. You know, I'll post something and I'll see you guys like, oh, yeah, man, you remember when we did this? You, Nate, Jeremy. Um but after plus one split, did you guys find yourself not only taking a break from the music, but also intentionally needing to take a break from one another? You know, you have to ask everybody that. For me, I, I, um, I mean, I, I'll be on, I'll be transparent. I always felt like I was trying to, to <clears throat> not take a break, but I'm always trying to be in touch with everyone. And I felt like that wasn't always reciprocated. So I kind of felt like, what's happening? Nobody wants to be friends? What's happening? Yeah. So I don't know what everyone's thoughts were. My thoughts were, hey guys, let's still talk. But that's how I am with everybody in life, you know? My wife and I, we're the same way. We, we meet people and we want to like interact and, and then when we feel like we get in the cold shoulder, just like, what the heck? What's happening? They want to be friends? You know? yeah. Um. So yeah, I don't know. I, def I definitely think um, yeah, the way Jason left probably created some, some distance, but since then we've, at least I have, and I think majority of the guys have reconciled some relational things. Yeah, like Jason, we we had a Zoom the other day, it was really great, all of this, but um, right. I, I hang, you know, I've hung with Jason many times, so I feel like we've, we've talked a lot of stuff that I think healed that transition that felt a little abrupt. Um, but uh, yeah, I think with, with, with him leaving, there was some dis distance that definitely happened between us and Jason just because of the nature of him kind of going a different different route right uh, the same with jeremy you know so i think the three of us nate gabe and i you know i i will be honest we, we really live together you know in the same house often and wrote the excess record and there's a lot of bonding things that happen there and um yeah and then um time just kind of went on and they moved to la i stayed in Nashville, and um yeah there's just a season of we'd always be in touch here and there yeah but the just, uh, I figured, uh, you know, if you're uh, even even in my personal life, you know, when I moved out of the house when I was like 23 or whatever, like between my my brother and I didn't have the strongest relationship, but we kind of like needed that distance to kind of like make us yeah grow and get that bond back together. So yeah, there's a healthy thing that happened that naturally happened. Yeah, not looking back, it's probably good because I feel like I developed on my own doing what I'm doing now that. Um, yeah, happened on my own versus feeling like, oh, I'm part of the band, you know? Yeah. So I think we kind of needed that. While you mentioned it, and you don't have to speak too much on it, I know, like, first of all, I want, and I think people need to hear this as well, like, there's a reason that Jason does not have a Facebook, an Instagram, there is a reason he doesn't have a YouTube, there's a reason that man, like, is, like, in a hole somewhere. Um, but I think also people need to also respect that because everybody's like all like gung ho about wanting to hunt him down and you know like uh, Elmer Fudd and he's Bugs Bunny or something. But would you be able to say like speak on just so give some people some uh, some closure? How like at least how he's doing and like oh, maybe yeah. even the state like where where is he at? Like is he living in California out there? With he's in, in California LA? right now. Yeah, yeah, he's in California. Well, last I talked, he was in California, but he's yeah. he on transition. He actually told me, he's like, I don't think they'll move to Nashville. So I moved to Nashville. Um, yeah, he, uh, yeah, but I think last I heard, he, uh, last I talked to him, he was in California, Northern California. Um, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he's doing good. You know, he's, um, 
he's you know it, he's a different Jason in some ways because um, life has gone on. He's super. Well, I will say he's definitely different Jason. He you know he he went and finished um, college and got his degree and he's very um, he was always well spoken but I feel like he he's even more like articulate and careful when he talks and and um, I'll have some conversations with him I'm like wow okay. Yeah, he's a little learned. He's a little learned on some things, you know, and uh, and so that's that's been really inspiring to talk about some things. And then, um, but yeah, he's easy going, man. We 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 have fun and, and laugh and reminisce about you know life, and um, he's a great singer still, you know. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, I don't know if he wants to say this or not, but I'll have conversations where I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Let's just release a solo thing. I'll produce it. Come on, you know. And he's like, yeah, let's let's do it. And so it's kind of like. He, he falls off the map with me sometimes, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm like, are you okay? Where are you? You know? You have, I, I literally sometimes think you're dead because you don't answer. Yeah. You know, I'm like concerned. This is, forget about working together. Are you alive? <laughs> right. <laughs> Does he know this page exists? Did you tell him that this page exists so he can at least, like, make oh, yeah. a fake profile and just, like, reminisce about the good old days and see these videos too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I should tell him to do that. I, I get the feeling... He's not, I mean, he's not as, he's going he's gonna to see this, like, what are you talking about? I guess, like, he's not, no, he'll say this. He's not as internet savvy as, as, as you and I may be with social media and getting some, you know? I mean, it's easy right. to make an account. But I feel like he's kind of one who will say, man, he'll ask me, man, what do I do? If I think about doing music again, I got to get my head wrapped around this. Well, how, do, how do I promote, you know? He'll ask me those kind of questions. For me, I'm like, how could you not know? But that's because that's what I do for a living. You know, I'm yeah. just living and breathing this. But but for him, he took a break from music where he, he told me a lot of his friends, you know, were like, didn't even know he was a singer, you know? Wow. That's he really kind of distanced himself because he's like, maybe, he's like, I don't have to be a singer, you know? I, I got this other app facets to me, which is true. I feel that way sometimes. I'm like, here I am doing music production. I mean, I love it. I will always do music, but... I'm more than music. I've got other right. things that I'm passionate about. So, uh, yeah, he just kind of took a journey of pursuing those things. And, um, yeah, actually, speaking of, I, I got to hit him up and see what's happening. Cause who knows? Um, yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll, Let him know about this page. A, an interview. If he ever comes to Nashville and now you get the page, who knows? Maybe I'll talk him into doing a little surprise you know, interview or something. <laughs> well, please do, mind. yeah. I mean, that, that would be super cool. Um, not, even if it's not on this page, like do it on you guys' yeah, official Yeah, we should on our page. side, really, yeah. So I feel like That'd this is cool. almost the official plus one page anyway. <laughs> I, I, Feels I'm like gonna, I'll make it be until, I'm, I'm trying to do that until you, I encourage you to make your own, then I'll back off this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm just um, So today is the 17th anniversary of the Exodus album. Is it today? I don't know. It is today. Uh, came out 17 years ago, November 18th, 2003. Wow. What goes through your mind when you think about that album, that era, and that being 17 years ago? I'll tell you what just went through my mind. What have I done with my life? What was my thought? <laughs> no, because I feel like sometimes I think about that, and I'm like, that wasn't that long ago, you know? I feel like the other versions of Plus One were longer ago, but because that record, something about that record makes me feel like, not that long ago because i think somewhere around then it, actually right at the end of that touring that record is when i met my wife Nina. so <laughs> i feel like you know she's in my life i know her very well so i feel attached to that that version of plus one um yeah i feel like that was a lot of fun memories but at the same time it was a weird um thing because i was also getting the, the to do my own solo thing and i and i was right. feeling like i don't want the guys thinking that i'm leaving the band because that was not my intention, um, and I didn't. But um, but I wanted to be able to share some things that I musically wanted to showcase that we didn't put a band that was the Exodus style. I love Exodus, but I am definitely a pop guy. You see my production. I'm I'm a pop guy. That, I, but I also love rock music. You know, and like it, live instruments. But there was right. wasn't being fulfilled sonically in me. That was happening in Exodus, and so I feel like I wanted to do that, you know, as a solo thing. So those are those are my memories of Exodus. Like, it's fun, but it's just like this weird transition that ended up doing what it did. Just kind of fell apart. I'm like, hey, let's part ways, just for a bit, and then, you know, we never came back. 
That, yeah. But yes, you did. That, that plus one. We did come back. We, we yeah. did. But that was me. That was my bad. I will take – that's not bad, but I will take fault for that. If I feel like I'm such a business, you know, mindset guy where uh, I kind of talk those guys into doing that latest plus one, you know? Gabe and, and Jason and – and um, I mean, I asked all of you, let's do it. But, but Nate didn't want to do it. J Jeremy didn't want to do it, of course. And um, I was like, well, guys, let's do it. You know, and uh, so we teamed up and, and brought some of our third party industry people in and we yeah. a deal that didn't make sense to continue on unless we had number one hits at radio. Because <laughs> there's so many pieces, people in the pie, you know? And so really looking back, we should have just done it ourselves and just put out more music. And you're answering we'll do, some guys. questions that I already have. So, you, <laughs> so we're, we got to hold off on that. I, I do have some questions on, on okay. uh, the 2014 era. Um, so let's see. We have nine minutes until Instagram's going to just cut us off here, and then we'll boot it up again. I only have a few more questions here, and then we'll jump into the reunion-type 2014 era, and then uh, some fan questions. Um, you digitally released a solo record titled Escape. Love that album. I know every song, every lyric on that album. Great <laughs> album. Um, in 2008, um, did you find yourself spending that four-year period? Because Plus One's last show was September 2004. You dropped that album December 2008. Did you find um, yourself spending that four-year period um, taking a deep breath from five years of being on the go? Or were you spending that four years writing and preparing yourself for that record the entire time? Okay, I'll be honest. Somewhere in there, I lost the exact question because Nate commented. I was like, what's he talking about? <laughs> Nate's in here? Yeah, he said, awkward, JK. I was like, wait, what was he saying awkward? What, what, what comment was it? Um, okay, so really, really brief. Repeat the question. I'm so sorry. Go for it. Uh, no, I just was saying you digitally released that album in 2008, but that was a four-year period between when Plus One ended, they played the last show, and when you released that album. Basically, what were you doing that time? Did you use that time to take a deep breath, or were you writing those four years to prepare and drop that album? The Exodus record? No, the uh, Escape out uh, your personal oh, solo. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that was a series of ups and downs for me. I, I, I've been writing all the time, so a lot of those were older songs. I just kind of read it and read it and read it and read it and read it. <laughs> you know, that, it's like, because I did it, yeah. So... Um, I had signed a record deal. That record deal uh, got swallowed up by another record company and, and got rid of a bunch of artists. And I thought, oh, they're going to they're gonna drop me. But they decided, no, we're going to have you to be the, a, a guinea pig for us because we're doing singles deals. And that's what's now called Capital Christian International. And uh, we're doing these singles deals. And um, so there's a lot of pressure to make that work. And so I was co-producing that with, with another friend, Matt Bronley who's an amazing producer. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it basically, even Matt was like, hey, this dude, I've never worked on a song where there's so many people telling us what to do. You got the radio guy, you got the labels, you got the president of the company. Because they really wanted to make this, this new deal format work. And right. it felt like it wasn't our thing. So I asked out of the deal, and I feel like they were going to drop me anyway, but I asked out. And, and we parted ways great. They let me keep my masters and keep the everything was great dream come true separation no bad blood that is awesome with the masters. yeah but yeah so it was that things like that and then figuring out what am i gonna do next and talking to different producers that probably took yeah a few years to where i ended up going i'm just gonna do it myself so i produced yeah. the record myself which you hear on spotify and that's what really started what i'm doing now i wasn't wanting to be a producer i want to be an artist you know and um be, people started going wait who produced this record that you did and that's how i fell into music production yeah and, and love it and started doing it so that's what i'm doing now and you're great at it so thank you <laughs> um so right now um just so everybody knows well have everybody in here i'm going to i only have a couple more questions i'm going to end this right now so we can so instagram doesn't abruptly cut us off in right. three minutes um and then everybody can just jump back in and then I, when i post this on youtube or everybody, i'll just splice it together but is that cool with you? If we cool, yeah, yeah. that way? I was just say you're saving these, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I, yeah, I am going right. to save this one. So. All right, cool. Yeah. So um, let's see. Um, one more question until we get, I'm going to jump into the plus one reunion 2014 era. Um, you mentioned in prior interviews how reluctant you were to join a boy band. Um, you're a pianist at heart. You wanted to stick with that. That's where your heart was. 
um, was making slash releasing um, your solo album, you know, like, was that freeing to you because you finally felt like you were able to express yourself through the music that you wanted to make without a major label breathing down your neck? I didn't feel it that way. Um, I did it out of necessity because I didn't feel like the lab label was uh, breathing. I mean, it was a weird hybrid. Even though I left that label, I felt like the label was going to drop me, although I don't know if that was true, but I feel like it was, to where I still kind of felt rejected. You know, I still felt like, oh. Um, so if anything, I was like, I just wanted to get this out there, you know. Um, yeah, but it felt freeing because I, I felt like I could just do whatever, you know. But yeah. also, it also didn't feel free because it felt like a lot of weight on my shoulders, and I and it, and it took me longer to make the record because you got to make the decision yourself, and you know it takes a long time. It's better to, to produce or to work with another person because you make decisions. It's not especially with computers, you you've got unlimited opportunities and options. Right. And it's not it's not good for the human mind to go. Well, what am I gonna do? And work on this snare until it sounds like a different snare. And then I heard another snare on the radio. Now I want to make it sound like that snare. <laughs> yeah. And like you know, you, you it's years, and you, you're not done with the song. The only reason I finish songs now is because there's a deadline. You know, I'm working with an artist, and like we got to put this out. All right, you can always do a better version of your song. You know? Right. And that's but, what I'm uh, doing this as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So to answer your question. It felt freeing, but at the same time, it just felt like. You know, is these are my goals, these are my dreams, is a necessity for now to put this record out and, and see what happens. So, <laughs> Nate said he can't believe, or he cannot believe that you didn't want to be in a boy band because uh, you had perfect harmonies and you were literally the only good dancer in the group. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, you know, looking back, yeah, I, I, I think I found myself a little bit in the band. I was like, yeah, I was kind of meant to do this, you know. Um, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> um. So yeah, I had, so I think it was Carly just said, AT&T commercial, give us the deets. She yeah, wants to. I feel like people know about the stuff for now, but Nate, are you okay with me like talking about stuff? I'm sure, whatever. Give me a big no if you want me to say nothing. nothing. Okay. Um, uh, so anyway, so uh, yeah, the, um, the AT&T thing is a commercial that if you haven't seen it, go to my YouTube. You can, you can see it on there. It's a commercial for AT&T. I, I do a lot of commercials um, at different agencies that would hit me up and be like, hey, we do this commercial. And the nature of doing that is you'll, they call them demos, I guess. And they're like, hey, we want something that sounds like this. Will you put it together? And um, so I'll, I'll try it and pitch it to them. And if I, if I win the commercial, they're doing that to many other composers as well, most of the time. And, and, if, I, and if you win the commercials, okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I, if you win the commercial, then awesome. It's big money. It's great. It's, it's just fun, you know? And uh, if you don't win it, yeah, they pay you a very small fee, but it's nothing, you know? So whenever you do a commercial, for me, my experience, whenever you do a commercial, you're kind of risking your time. They have to decide, is this worth it? So anyway, I've been doing that for years. I know how it works. Sometimes I'll risk it and not win anything, and I'll risk it, and it'd be great. Well, right. I got a call, and they're like, hey, let's do the – um." We need something that sounds like a boy band. And it's for AT and T, you know. And I was like, I got this. Oh, you called the right guy. You know, just yeah. I, didn't, I didn't tell them that. I just in my heart. You know? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I just hit up Nate and I was like, dude, I got this opportunity. They I, I did the demo. They love my track. We just gotta make it legit. They want another singer. I could hire anybody else out, but I thought, why not hire you out and let's do this, you know? And so long distance, he, he sang on, he has a, a studio set up at his place and he sang his vocal parts and I sang my vocal parts and we did a duet thing or we just made, it wasn't a duet. We just made it try to sound like a boy, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what the at and commercial is. It's, it's Nate night. Yeah. It was super cool for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I'm going to ask you some questions. You kind of answered some of these already. Um, yeah. But the whole 2014 era plus one. So that had a lot of people and, ha and currently has a lot of people kind of scratching their heads. Um, some of the things about that. So, oh, yeah. How, first of all, how did that idea spark? You said, and I assumed already it was you because you kind yeah. of like seem like the, the spokesperson of the band, I guess, if you will. So, how did that spark? Yeah, I mean, I'm not the official spokesperson, but it just felt, it just, for that version, it, it just happened. You know, Gabe and I had a music production company together. We were producing different artists and, and just us kind of 
after our break, like you said, you mentioned there's a break of us kind of different ways. When Nate and Gabe um, moved to LA and did Castle Door for a while, for many years, um, somewhere in there, Gabe, actually the reason I started doing commercials is because of Gabe. Gabe hit me up one day, he's like, check this out. He sent me a little BM BMW commercial, which is like a demo that he did. Yeah. And, he's like, and I was like, what is this? How did you do that? I, I, was, <laughs> I was so like, how do you do this stuff? He's like, well, you just, you know, sync it up and all that. I was like, I, I want to do that. And he's like, well, there's like, I found this company that I work for here in LA. He's like, he's like, they have a national division. And so I, I went and started working for the national division for a bit. Anyway, somewhere in there, he decides to come to, to Nashville and um, he moves to Nashville. And so we, we kind of rekindle on, on friendship level, but also just working together musically. And so we say, let's form a music production site together, or company. Multi-tone, yeah. Yeah, multi-tone music. And, um, you know, in in that, and so we did that for a little bit. So somewhere in there, birds the the idea of like, what if we do another plus one record? You know, you think the other guys would do it? And so, um, yeah, the only that's where it came from. Yeah, so that's how that happened. So yeah, and I think we were still we were still excited about maybe working together, but then it did feel rushed in some ways. And then really, that song and a lot a lot of fans may like that song, and that was great. But I don't felt I don't feel like it felt like a plus one song. We were kind of under the the we kind of gave the reins to another manager here in Nashville who's super successful in Christian music. And he was like, it's all about the song. Let's do this for Christian radio. This is what Christian radio wants. And we're like, okay, we'll do this for this song just to see what happens. Try to be open. Yeah. And, um, but I don't feel like it was, if, if we were going to do a real plus one thing, I feel like we would embrace the pop sonic elements a little more than that song did, you know? I think it like kind of should, it didn't sound like plus one, not like now you like I look back at it but I think it's still kind of especially like the picture with you guys in like suits and whatnot like it kind of just showed like hey we're not 17 year old boys with highlighted hair dancing around <laughs> on stage anymore we're like we're like we're men yeah uh, like that was the idea so yeah I mean that's that's kind of what I, still, I see that picture of like oh we look like pastors yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I regret that. doing that but it's fine <laughs> you look like a GQ magazine kind of like but uh yeah um, so you already answered this earlier, but I was going to ask, were all original members contacted for the opportunity? Uh, oh, yeah. Like, regardless of where they might stand with wanting to do it or not, you like, just out of respect, did you be like, hey, Nate, hey, Jeremy? Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I hit up everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that was the plan. It would be, that was the ultimate plan. How cool would it be for all five of us to be there and see what happens, you know? And even, right. like, at the time, we had an idea of the suits. It'd be cool. But, um, yeah, it was just a thought, you know? Yeah. Um, and how many songs were cut in the studio in 2014? You only released my all. So oh. there's some videos of you going like, hey, guys, check this out. And you see yeah, yeah. some songs. Oh, yeah. I probably got on my computer. Uh, I, I do have them on my computer. Um, oh, no. Now you got to show them. <laughs> maybe I'll play a little clip. Um, I'm going to show you the list. Uh, there's definitely like four or five, I think. Oh, my. Just for fun, let's look. Are, and are you allowed to, are you, another question I have is, can you not legally release them because of the management deal that you had? Yeah, it gets tricky because some of the songwriters did it, um, you know, did it knowing, think it, even pitched us the songs thinking, oh, you know, plus one's going to do this. And so I feel like that song, my all, is technically not approved to be on Spotify. You know, that's why it's not on Spotify. I don't know, you know, like the guy... The person who owns that master is not even us. So oh kinda, wow! Yeah, so it just kind of got tricky. The deal we did. What am I looking for? I'm so one track. Okay, yeah, another one track. plus one track. It from 2014. Oh, yeah. I got it in this other drive. Let me let me look here. I'm getting, I'm getting the the pinwheel. Let me see. Oh, because I'm accessing this drive. Anyway, it's like four or five songs. One of them, I'll tell you. I, I remember one was. Um, so my all was the single we did, or another one was called. Uh... Oh man, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm about to pull it up. Here it goes. Here it goes. Oh, you know what? I'll take that back. We we may have we may have cut as a band as the new plus the third version of plus one. Um, we may have cut like three songs together, but. I remember doing a lot of demos with Gabe. When we would write different songwriters, and I probably tracked out a bunch of demos. So, yeah, there's probably 10 songs, to be honest, that we thought about. 
Uh, guys, I know you're hating seeing the back of my head, and that's annoying. It's annoying. Hang on. I don't think they care because right now I think a lot of them think they're going to hear another plus one song they've never heard before. But I'm I mean, maybe, maybe I'll do a little snippet. Uh, okay. Let's let's get this thing up here. Let's go in here and see what we got. Plus one folder. Um. Yeah. So these are the songs, kind of ish. You know, uh, but doesn't mean these were seriously thought about. Some of these are things I was trying to pitch. Uh, okay, yeah. I think God Watches Over You was one that we, we pitched. Let me let me see. I'm going to be scary if I'm going to play this to see what this sounds like. Oh, yes, it's Jason. I'll get to, I'll get to the chorus. There you go. I'll give you a little, little thing there. Dude, that, was, that song needs to be released. It's so uh, good. I mean, yeah, there's so many things. Yeah, well, okay. We'll see. We'll talk to some people. See if we at least do an Instagram release clip. Um, let's see here. Where am I at? Why was there never an official statement? Um, addressing plus one second disband was just a matter of not wanting to let fans down or oh, I know exactly why no uh just miscommunication but I think it literally because the nature of us coming together and really someone someone holding the reins of everything this manager that we gave it wasn't like we were in slavery with this manager we were like hey will you lead us what do we do with this broken band trying to we kind of trust you um so, like you said, you know, a lot of these decisions couldn't be made, you know. So when we broke up or, or stopped, just didn't do anything, it was because the first single, it was a mixture of the first single didn't take to radio as it needed to in order to make this whole new idea work. Right. The entities coming together. But then the other reason, honestly, was um, I ended up deciding to move to Los Angeles and Gabe did the same and then Jason lived out there I guess it's no excuse we could have still con continued but the management was in Nashville and we just moved and they, I think they just felt that too like it was just coming apart so um yeah that's just kind of how that happened and then it felt weird like how do we tell the fans what do we say and then our lives got busy and yeah I, I feel like out of respect we should have said something official but once again communication Jason kind of disappeared on us. Me and Gabe were in transition of everything in life. Every, our communication was different. Like, well, who's going to say what? I guess right. I should have said something, really. But I, and I didn't know what did they feel, you know? Um, but here we are. Talking yeah. about it. Uh, <laughs> and it says, Trump said the last version of Plus One was a hoax. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. I feel like that really wasn't Plus One. It was just like us kind of getting together. But, you know, some people could say this wasn't Plus One. Really, that Nate and I have had conversations about that. It's like the real Plus One was the five of us, you know? Yeah, and Nate, Nate said that last chat too, yeah. So... Oh. It's it's true, you know, and I miss, there's elements of that. I mean, we're different people now, you know, but it would be cool to, we really thought about doing some kind of reunion that would be like, do we just come together? Nothing like musical, like a record, but do we just come together and, and invite people to come out? And what is that 20 year reunion? But then the year 2020 happened and we just kind of threw some things off too. But, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Was, that's, so that was another question. The, the last question pretty much is, you know, everybody is, is dipping into their 40s now and nobody expects you guys to be doing the get on stage highlight your hair again spike it up and do written on my heart yeah but what are the chances realistically of a reunion ever happening even if it's like hey you know jason and gabe let's all right let's do like screw the label let's just do this on our own because i feel like that could actually take off what are the chances of, of that happening before everybody you know nate's uh, at, I know Nate's not doesn't want to be involved. I know Jeremy said he doesn't want to. Jeremy made a post actually in April saying he wouldn't want to be involved. 
what is the chances of you know you guys three saying let's just do this on our own without the label and release these song or more songs? Oh, you mean what are the chances of the three of us minus Nate and Jeremy? Yeah, like the 2014 plus one saying let's do this a different way and let's try this again. No, it's not gonna happen. I think, you don't think ever, so? yeah, no, no. If we ever did something, it needed to be you know all of us. I think at this point it just feels like we're muddying the, the waters of what is plus one and which version and i think yeah yeah and then it, it's it's what it is too it's like i feel like it's okay i'll be honest i was so gung-ho like guys let's you know let's get the band back together you know and and i think even recently story the first time i'm like ah, i'm tired i'm kind of over the idea of doing plus one you know what I mean? So even if the other guys like, let's do it, I'd be like, I don't know. I got some other goals and things in life. Not right. goals, but just different, different way that that it, it just feels like a different thing now. You know, um, I wouldn't mind. You don't need I, a tour. I wouldn't mind going, and I say this all the time. Maybe this is different. I wouldn't mind going, guys. Just for fun, why can't we record just a pop song, just a good old love pop song? that just would be fun to do, you know? And put it on Spotify just for fun. No promotion, just sneak it up there, see what happens, if it flops, does. If, if you guys love it, cool. And uh, that's it, no promotion, no saying, this song's out. Just see what that would, see what it do. Just get those harmonies going again. Yeah. I mean, and I say that, but that's a lot of work to do a song. Oh, definitely. It takes a lot yeah. of work and a lot of time, and then everybody's got to make sure they're proud of it. So it's like you're kind of invested in it. So at this point, maybe it's just it's it's just more fun to do what we're doing now and think yeah. back, see, see what Nate's doing, doing some really great music. And I'm about to release some stuff. I know I've been saying that, but I've literally got – you want to hear a song? Yeah. I, I've been waiting for you to release another album. I'll, I'll I'll give you a little sneak peek of of a of, of, of a thing I'm doing. And you're right, Nate's been also killing it with all his albums um, and his EPs. In fact, I was actually just listening to Nate's stuff earlier today. Yeah, I'm really inspired by the stuff. Whoops, the stuff he's doing. He's an incredible lyricist. Pumping it, oh dude, yeah, he's so great. It's not even fair. I feel like he just sits down and does it, and he's a good thinker he nate when he writes lyrics like he's they're so deep and meaningful like i will find out and like think about what they mean and like have an epiphany like 10 years later after he wrote up like i'll be listening to castle door yeah. and I'm like oh this is what he meant yeah I'm, I'm, I'm strictly i'm like i'll get lucky here and there and write a song if i try i'm like okay i did pretty good on those lyrics but i'm i'm a melody guy and now even more recently I've, I've really relied on my wife she's great at lyrics and so we write a lot of stuff together and not right. again, I try to get lazy where I just kind of rely on her lyrics. Even even this song I'm about to show you is I wrote myself, and it's actually about my wife. And it's funny, it's because she's like, you never write anything about me. You wrote one song about me, Romance You, which is on my record. We get married, and you never write a song again. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I just needed that one to seal the deal. Like. <laughs> and, then, and then actually, I did write this song. And then um, I told her, hey, this song is almost done. I just have to write the bridge. And then jokingly, I was like, can you help me write it? <laughs> you know, the song's about her. You know? <laughs> anyway, it's funny. I'm going to finish it. I know, I'm taking forever. Guys, um, thanks Somebody for... Somebody just said in the chat that Plus One has 150,000 monthly listeners. Oh, on, yeah. On Spotify. <laughs> I mean, okay, just strictly business-wise, guys, if the Plus One guys are listening, it doesn't make sense that we're not releasing something just because we would own the master. Every... It changes, but like every million, I'm not going to talk about this, but it, there's there's literally on a business side, just releasing things on Spotify that will be great. But once again, it opens up a, you know, a commitment that everybody's going to make sure they want to do. That I don't even know if I want to do. Okay, what am I looking for? My uh, name solo song. Yeah, Sorry solo. Okay, let me look here. You know what? Speaking of, I might show, let, let me do a, a little plus one thing here. Um, cause I don't make it about myself. Although this interview, yeah. is about me. It, it, this is about Nathan Walters. Okay. I'll, okay. Remind me, I'll try to find this other melody. There's a melody that Nate, if you're listening, I don't know if you, um, I don't know if you remember this, but there's a song that, that you know, I guess me, you and Gabe kind of wrote. I feel like it was just me and you, but I feel like Gabe was in it. Um, and I, I always think of it every now and then it comes back in my head. I don't even know if you remember it, but it was like, 
I want to try. I think I have the the work tape of it. Such a great melody that it's from like 2003. Yeah, it was during the Exodus time. We never used it, but it was something that Nate just kind of took the lead on and sang. And I always am like, man, that melody needs to be heard. And uh, it's just been sitting here on my hard drive for years. I can't imagine the material that you have on your hard drive with songs that nobody's heard. No, there's a lot. Yeah, and I, sometimes I'll go back and think, how can I? It's Someone's sad. Been I don't them want, up I don't want the to never be heard, you know? I guess there's like alternate versions of like songs on Exodus. Like there's a Circles remix with like you in it. And like, I've never heard these oh, or yeah. even know where to get these. That's right. I don't know either. Uh... If anybody in this, uh, Nate said he's scared. If anybody in uh, the chat has that Circles remix, send me a message. No, Nate, it's a cool one. It's nothing like weird. It's actually really cool. Like it's just, it's a, it's a, it's lyrics that aren't even done. It's like you're scatting, but the melody's so pretty. Um, but before I play yours, Nate, I'm just gonna play a little clip of my my new song. I'm so to Mel and one track minded. Let, give me two seconds to like click on this. There we go. I clicked on it. Found it. <clears throat> Is this it? Wait a minute. Sometimes I get scared when I see a session it doesn't look like it. Here, I'm I'm just gonna literally open this session. Here. What the computer looks like. The song is called New It. Called what you said? Um New It, like I knew it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nate said I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. All right. Yeah, if you and Nate ever got into like falling out, you just have so much, so many no. files of Nate's voice on there, just the blackmail. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna release this. No, I'm just kidding. Nothing crazy. This thing is taking forever. I hate it when there's downtime on a, on a live chat. Okay. In the meantime, I'll plug the giveaway we're doing. So yeah. if you have, haven't seen it already, uh, people in the chat doing a giveaway in, con uh, in conjunction with Sympath Marketing. Uh, I have a brand new sealed copy of Exodus, um, actually donated by Carly, uh, who is in the chat. Shout out to Carly. Um, brand new sealed copy of Exodus and Sympath Marketing. Promise from Sympath Marketing has a signed copy of Exodus. I do too, but I'm not giving them away. Um, signed copy of Exodus as that she's giving away through her company. All you have to do is go follow her page uh, and then give the original post of the two albums a like, and then we are going to randomly pick a winner in six days. So, you know what's cool? I found an old <clears throat> plus one t shirt that will fit my daughter <laughs> <laughs> in a box. I was like, oh, this is crazy. It's so outdated. She's not going to wear it. But I thought, oh, how cool. And how I actually have some stuff. I was talking, uh, Gabe's wife messaged the page, and uh, she said that Gabe, like, She's like, Gabe has kept nothing. She's like, we have no, no. She said the only thing that Gabe has is his Dove Award. He's like, we have no memories of anything. And I told her I, would, I was going to send her, like, several things, uh, and I'm going to mail them to her. But, uh, like, one of them is a size small, like, vintage, like, plus one T-shirt. And I was like, yeah, you can have it. And, uh, I mean, here's a bunch of, like, uh, magazine clippings. But no, you mentioned I mean that shirt. So. I've got bo little boxes full of stuff, and some of it is not always that I kept it, but like my family kept all kinds of stuff. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I yeah I should try to go through just to feed you some stuff. I got a lot of pictures that would be fun and personal. We went on, in Southeast Asia. There's there's pictures of us like hanging out and doing MPP for the Philippines. And... Yeah, I mean anything helps this page at this point. I've kind of. Uh milked out everything i had <laughs> i've been writing this page since may so you know it's, i'm just going off of running on fumes here if I, whenever somebody sends me something i post it but anything yeah. at this point helps so all right let me play a little clip of this uh okay here we go okay i'm just gonna start at the pre-chorus i'm not gonna bore people who, who don't want to listen to this uh, and I go into the chorus. And it's certain Night everywhere That you said to me You and I realize I can spend my life Staring at those eyes That was the 
Sounds awesome. Is that going to be your single that you release? Like your first single? It'll be one of them. I have a, I have a few. I'm tempted to do it as the first one. We'll see. I have, I have a few different ones that I want to do. And then I have some piano only stuff that I, I'm thinking about putting out. So I don't know. What should I put out? My piano stuff first or this thing? I don't know. Drop it all. Yeah. <laughs> Drop it off. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So if I know that some. Fans had some questions in here. Yeah, let's take fans. that, guys. Um, I guess there's a there's an option at the bottom where you can I don't know how it works. Um, you can post questions and I can like like there's one already in there. Um, oh. somebody said there it is right there. So you can post them at the bottom of the little question mark thing and then I can make them big on the screen. What's the biggest oh. thing you miss about being in plus one? Little Braveheart. Ash. Okay, uh, okay, uh, big thing was probably touring and uh, around the world at, at that time. Now I don't want to do it, but then that was fun. Touring around and seeing all kinds of people, meeting all kinds of people, that was pretty fun. Yeah, I would imagine like, touring yeah. is fun. I'd imagine, you know, now it just sounds tiring and nobody wants to tour now because it's just going to get coronavirus. But... I think it's also, yeah, I think it's also the feeling of like the unknown, what's going to happen? We're so young, we're at this place of, you know, the sky's the limit. Now I'm at a place where like, I'm still a big dreamer. If I'm honest, I'm still a big dreamer. But I yeah. still feel like I'm starting to see, okay, I know what 20, I know what 40 years feels like. Well, I don't know if I know what 40 years feels like because I was only three. But that's, you know, I know what a long time feels like. So I'm like, okay, I do this one more time and I'm like 80. Okay, you know. So I start, start, life starts to feel a little shorter. Then you feel like you're, you, the life is forever. But I'm just not starting to go, okay, I can see life. Life ends. <laughs> yeah. Not to be like morbid or anything, it's reality. <laughs> somebody said, here's another one here. Wait, wow, they, somebody just came in at the same time. Um, here's one. Uh, craziest <laughs> fan story. Hmm. Uh, I wouldn't imagine there's any like bras being thrown on stage, maybe like Bibles or something like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, bras, <laughs> th bras have been thrown on stage. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. That was. That was that was that was during like a Jessica Simpson. T we toured with Jessica Simpson. Oh, okay. And um, but I think like literally probably someone threw a bra. I mean, we we never saw <laughs> Nate. They're not as, as old as Biden. <laughs> True. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, even that. It's was that crazy? That was crazy. Yeah, I remember thinking, "Oh, bra on stage." Uh, <laughs> I mean, we had people like sneak. Stay oh, when we were in, in Asia. Um, we had uh, people stay in the bathrooms of the hotels that we were at. <clears throat> come out, but it's not, it's not super crazy. Um, people do that. Um, Sneak on your tour bus or anything like that. Like, nah, someone snuck in our in our van once. We had a van. They snuck in there, but still wasn't like too shocking. It was like, oh, okay, ha ha ha. <laughs> um, yeah. Nate, is, <laughs> Nate wanted to. <laughs> He said, did you smell it? Nate's just going crazy in the oh, chat right now. <laughs> you were there. Oh, it it landed on you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't let's see. I'm trying to find the song of Nate, too. What is it? Rob asked, can fan base donate to help get masters back to you guys? Oh, uh, no. It's so expensive, too. That's nope. Not gonna happen. It's too much money involved. That's a nice gesture. That would be cool, but it's hundreds of thousands of dollars have been spent. I'm sure you'd be surprised. Yeah. Um. Somebody asked favorite song on Exodus. Most of the <sighs> I love Be Love. I love the bridge of Be Love tonight. Right? Is that the bridge? It is powerful. Um, I love the chords. I love the melody. I also <laughs> love on Poor Man the um how we change time signatures. To I guess I didn't realize that. Yeah, it does change. 
Yeah. That does change. Um, did you guys change the name of B? Because I don't know if people know this, but B Love actually started off as Make Love, but it didn't. Yeah. So uh, did you guys just like, well, this sounds like a song that about intercourse. So we're going to yeah. change this. <laughs> Yeah, that was the big reason. I mean, we knew it, but we were trying to be like, no, it's about, it's not about that. And yeah. then the labels, like, it sounds too much like it. And we knew it, of course. And we're like, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> Nate, good, good point. <laughs> Nate, <laughs> Nate goes, we can't do a plus one reunion because Nathan would know, never know any of the words. And that is so true. To this day, I still don't know lyrics uh, to any words. Um to songs and lyrics and words. Um, so yeah, that is so true, man. I would literally be on stage and sing my solo and sometimes I would just have to speak in tongues, basically. <laughs> I'd be like, sure, again. <laughs> I'd be writing the whole new song. <laughs> and everybody would call me on it later. Like, you don't know the words. I'm like, I don't know, I just went blank. <laughs> That's horrible. hilarious. Funny. Uh, somebody asked, do you make music with your kids or are they interested in music? Oh, yeah. I don't know. So they probably don't follow me. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see my kids on my stories. Um, my son and daughter are both super into music, um, both super talented. I mean, Definitely. one is three, one is, is almost will be eight in March. And uh, my son, my daughter went through a phase where she really likes music. Now she's kind of like, she's naturally talented and doing stuff. But um my my son wakes up in the morning and goes, Daddy, can we make a track? I mean, he's obsessed, you know? And it was just kind of cool to see. And my wife will say that. She'll like, kind of cool. Do you, what does that feel like that you have, like, you literally have a little guy who's like you, who's probably going to yeah. be a little worker or helper, you know? But I've on, on purpose never tried to push them to do music because I don't want to feel pushed. But naturally, they're just seeing what I do. And yeah. They, they make music and they literally go, okay, can we put it on Spotify? They think you make music and it goes on Spotify right away. Which, as soon as it bounces, it just like right on yeah. Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. What was your favorite city to tour in? Favorite city? You know what? Sadly, I, I, um, well, I have memories, but a lot of our shows, it's like we were in and out. I didn't really get to embrace the cities and, and get to tour the cities. Um, so even though we went to a lot of cities, we didn't always get to go to the the touristy parts of the cities. But the ones that stick out, I love New York City, the old school version of New York City. It's a big one, you know. Um, H&M and Diesel. Yeah, I get, yeah. Um, but they're just the energy of the city. But um. It's gonna sound boring, but I love I love Santa Monica and LA, and we lived those those are that's why we ended up moving there. Just love the weather. Um, yeah, that's a boring. Sorry, that's a horrible answer, but New York I, and I, LA. People or... always ask me you. So I li I'm from a really small town in Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, and uh, people always ask me like, oh yeah, you're uh, clearly a large plus one fan. You have this page, whatever. Like, did you ever see him live? And I and you know the story I've told you, but I'm yeah. like. No, like you came 10 minutes from my house one time and I wasn't able to see you because my parents weren't in a good financial situation. I was only nine, but like yeah. to this moment, like, I'm like, we're like at Thanksgiving and just like, you didn't take me to that plus one oh. concert. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, I'm talking just about cities. Like, I can't believe you actually came to, and I don't know if you ever heard of it or remember it, but it was Erie, Pennsylvania. And oh, you yeah. played at a place called the Warner theater, which is really weird. Now, like I know what the Warner theater is like you guys played there. Um, okay. But yeah. So like, wow. everybody I was like at church with, like uh, before I left Erie, like because I would I was on the like the worship team and stuff like that. Like, oh, remember when we went to the Plus One concert? I'm like, yeah, I I did wasn't there. <laughs> I don't know that theater, but I remember I remember that city. I remember the, the city. Yeah. Um, oh man, that's Let's see. never never got. You know, my wife she'll say that too. I'm pulling up the session. I really oh, I might have a file here when I was talking about Nate. Um. <clears throat> My wife, she'll say that too. Like she never really got to uh, see any of those big plus one shows, but she'll hear people talk about it. And you know, she's like, "Oh, I kind of wish I knew you then." <laughs> did she? Did she know who you were? Like when you guys were dating? Did she? Yeah, she already knew. know who you were. Yeah, she knew who we were. Like, so my wife is um, grew up. Uh, she came here from. She's born in Estonia. Speaks Russian, so it's easier to say she's Russian, even though she's born in Estonia. But speaks Russian. Grew up in Russian community. And even though she lived in here in America, 
Um, she moved here when she was 12, 11. And she grew up in a um, Russian community. So Russian church, Russian everything. And, and obviously was in America, but, and, and knew of things around, but um, she knew of plus one. She would actually be like, oh, was it Christian in sync? <laughs> <You know? laughs> kind of just, so she never listened to it. I think she heard our song on the radio or whatever, but when we actually met each other, uh, yeah, things change, and she, yeah, so I, I won't bore everybody with that story, but it's it's a great one. You want to yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we'll get a few more questions in here because we probably have about ten minutes till Instagram's gonna cut the cord on this, okay. and then we can just we can wrap it up through there. Um, so somebody asked, "What is your? Why is the song with Natalie Grant on Spotify?" I did notice that, but I already have it on my in my iTunes library. But why is that song not on? Like, if you go to like her album stronger or whatever album it's on like it's grayed out why is oh, that really? well that must be i don't know that exact answer but when it's grayed out obviously uh the label or that's it's on that label but whoever owns the master hasn't given the approval for it to be uploaded to spotify i think it's <laughs> that simple yeah but i don't know that to be the the the, the actual answer but that's yeah i didn't notice it was grayed out weird it is, yeah. Oh, well, that's weird. Yeah. Oh, I just, okay. Well, a lot of people think every song's on Spotify, but it's not true. You have to give the, you know. Yeah. Permission for it to be up there. And uh, that was my. Uh, speaking of that again, I remember Natalie Grant came to. I don't know if you remember Kingdom Bound. There was like a Kingdom Bound by the Bay in Erie because I live right on the beach, and she's like, "All right, guys, this is one of my new songs. It's called Whenever You Need Somebody." And, uh, I got so excited because I thought she was going to bring you guys there. She's like, and I, I hit up my friends in Plus One to see if they could come sing this. And she's like, and they said, no, they can't make it. And I just, I'm like, there goes my second opportunity. Uh. <laughs> but somebody asked, uh, do you remember the days you were on Pop Stars? Yeah, I think we did one episode, right? Is that the Pop Stars was? Or Eden's what's... Crush or something Eden's like that. Crush. Yeah, I remember that. That was fun. Um, and you posted something about that on, on the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was cool. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's very cringy to, to watch that thing that you posted, too. It just feels like... It seems um, fake. So, was it staged? Oh, yeah, it's staged. Yeah, it's definitely staged. Like, they said, hey, well, looking back, I'm like, it's staged, right? Those girls are, like, you know, acting over the top, you know? But I think... David would say he's like, "Hey, they really do like the your music, you know." I'm like, "Whatever, you know." Um, <laughs> but I feel like they they went crazy for the cameras, you know. Um, but that was the first time we met them. So one of the girls went what? on to be huge and be in the Pussycat Dolls. Oh yeah, I Nicole, forget what's what her name is. But... Nicole, uh, I don't know how to say her last name. Something. <laughs> uh, yeah, she. Yeah, 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 and. Um, yeah, so we actually toured with them for a bit too, uh, on that Jessica Benson tour, actually. So, yep. Uh, I did not know that. Yeah. Yep. But how do you say her last name? That's her name. Um, uh, Nicole Schwartzinger. Scher Scherzinger, something. Everyone's saying it. You can type <laughs> it and say it. Let's get a couple more questions in here. Um, yeah, I, I found the song I was talking about, about Nate, the melody that I like. But so here's the session. Here's the strings. But the file is not located. I don't know what's happening. It's an old session. So find that. <laughs> unfortunately, I got to see if I can find it in there. But it's not showing it. You know. Here's one there. Oh, Scherzinger. Um, so what someone said. Sorry, go for it. Y'all race. Somebody said one of the. We'll do two more questions. Um, this one is: Was there anyone you met that you got starstruck in front? Of? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, a lot of people. I mean, well, I mean, I mean, I was a big Michael W. Smith fan. This is so embarrassing to keep talking about because I get talked about all the time. But I, I was so obsessed with Michael W. Smith. So when I uh, met him and actually ended up got to work with him on a worship record, sang on it. I was still starstruck deep down inside. I was still starstruck. You know? um, but yeah, I think um, actually I would say that's the only person I'm starstruck. Other than that, everybody else I never got starstruck with. We met yeah. Boyd Man, Bright Midnight, you know, uh, lots of artists, and I never felt starstruck. I felt excited, like wow, this is amazing. But I literally would get nervous. I, literally, Michael W. Smith asked. 
to write with me at the height of plus one, you know? And I was like, sure, yeah, let's do it. And I got so nervous. I still never hit, I never hit him up, never follow up with him. Cause I think I, deep down inside, I was still kind of like starstruck and nervous, which whatever. And a lot of people don't know, or maybe they do know your voice is on a Michael W. Smith album. Oh yeah. If you go to, um, if you open up that album, it's his first worship album they call worship and if you open up the cd cover i'm right there in the middle Look oh there's a picture of you too yeah oh i didn't know that either you know he, i just knew that your voice was on the song as background vocals i didn't know that yeah he invited uh all of plus one to go sing on that and uh, only jason and i decided to do it and um he flew us down flew or in a bus i think it's a bus ride took us on a bus ride from Nashville all the way down to Florida. And it ha just so happened to be at my church, that big church I told you about that I grew up at. That's where the concert was at. So was, that was very nostalgic for me. It was cool. Here's this icon that I wanted to, you know, be like and be, you know, be, yeah, kind of. I was very inspired to do Christian music because of it. And here I am singing on a thing and he invited me to sing it. It's crazy. That is crazy. It's kind of fun. Have you, when's the last time you talked to him? Uh, a couple weeks ago, I I see him in the, uh, before we moved to LA. We'd see him in Nashville all the time, and 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 he, uh, yeah, he's super cool and knows my wife. I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, and Ina still be looking at me like, are you still starstruck? <laughs> I'm like, no, no, I'm cool. I'm normal. <laughs> she can tell I'm still a little like, I actually you I squeak him, yeah. after you say I'm cool. Like, yeah, I'm cool, man. <laughs> so I I saw him a couple a couple of weeks ago um, at the Franklin factory. Saying hi, you know, we're just hanging out, no big deal. I still, yeah, but I, I had my son, I had my daughter, and my son with me, and and they were in their mask, you know. <laughs> and uh, and um, yeah, we were still in our mask. I didn't know. I kept it on here, and I don't know. That's a whole other thing. But um, so anyway, uh, yeah, it was cool. Somebody asked what song it was. I believe it was the song Above All, right? Yeah, you know, it was actually that whole record. So he had an ensemble, oh, okay. with Amy Grant, and um just as different artists at the time come and like sing in an ensemble. So um, it wasn't like I was behind the microphone being featured. We were all just kind of singing. Yeah. yeah. So cool. Kind of like a, the Michael Jackson, we are the world type deal. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. But a little small. <laughs> yeah. Ensemble. Well, we could call it there for Instagram. Cut this off. Okay. Um, I want to definitely say thank you so much for doing this uh taking the time to do this you didn't have to and uh but i know everybody in here i speak for everyone i say they're super appreciative of this as much as i am so thank you so much um oh yeah no that's <laughs> thank you for having me on here it's really cool that you're doing this and everybody thank you for you know watching this tonight this late at night especially in nashville this is really cool thank you and um i just read a comment someone said they see me in franklin factory often and in Nashville, but I never want to come say hi. You should come. You should come say hi next time, even if our kids are. It's fine. I've had a few, couple people say that. They said they've seen you in, in public, in like the malls and stuff like that. But they're like, they didn't want to say anything. But oh, they should <laughs> say hi. I'm like he's not gonna bite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just say hi. Um, yeah, thanks for you know, thanks Zach for what you're doing. It's really cool. It's been inspiring. I I know for a bit you, you probably get overwhelmed and like, oh man, this is what am I doing on this page? Yeah, I don't know if you do feel that way, but sometimes but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, man. I, I and I know it's hard and this year's been crazy, but yeah, it's inspiring. Um to even I, I look forward to seeing like what's he gonna oh, so keep it going. And I'll try let's try to get some other you got anybody else next to interview? Do you need help? Uh, do you need help? Uh, yeah, I do need help. Help me get Jason. Um See, I'm uh, the guy who I talks know, to Jeremy. Things. You need me to do it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I feel like Jeremy. Into it. <laughs> Jeremy doesn't seem like he'd want to do it. Gabe is too. Yeah. Seems like he'd be too shy to do it. I don't know. So honestly, I think I could probably get Jason before the other guys. Let's do it. Let me honestly, talk. Let's do it. I don't. I think you would have to be. You know, I don't figure out the just the logistics of it because he'd have, he'd have to have an Instagram, and I'm definitely not going to be like just sign into my Instagram. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can figure it out. Well. You have him sign into the plus one Instagram. Oh, that's a good idea. There you go. There we oh, go. Great idea. That's how we should have do it. We should have been doing it that way anyway. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, we got to do this. We'll we'll keep in touch. We'll, we'll do. Let's see if we can't get Jason in here. Okay. And that would be awesome. So, or yeah. even just something like that. So. Yeah. 
it, he says it's Nate Cole says it's crazy that Jason died. Yeah, <laughs> it's not true, everyone. It's I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe it is. <laughs> I know it's not. But, um, but right, yeah, thank you. thank you so much. And Zach, yeah, I'll see you. Uh, see you soon. I know we missed, we couldn't see you came to Nashville, and I was like, let's meet up, and it didn't happen. But yeah, I'll be there, I think, in the spring. So maybe we can try it again. So. Yeah, let's try it. All right, okay. Nice. All right. Thanks so much. You have a good night. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. And hope everybody has a great night. All right, guys. Bye. We'll see you. See you.